we go. It should be off. All yours, Trista. Thank you. Thank you, Therese. So welcome, everyone, uh, to this July meetup, which was a virtual event. Uh, we are the Women Who Mule uh, EMEA group. And uh, we've got our allies, who is uh, Uspa One, who's joined us. And Diana, me, and Therese, they are, we are part of the Women Who Mule EMEA community. And also a lot of others in the audience who are part of this community that joined in the meetup group. And uh, so let's get started. The agenda of this meetup would be uh, just a short community update, and then we will get started with the universal API management demos, which are quite interesting. So we have with us Therese, who will be giving us a demo, which is quite exciting around API governance. And we have Pawan, who's going to be uh, giving us the demonstration on the AnyPoint Flex Gateway. So two very interesting topics, which are very much popular in the in the MuleSoft space. And followed by, we'll be reflecting on this year's uh, Connect event. I'm sure you must have heard of it. It's uh, the global event that MuleSoft hosts every year. And we have this uh, you know, consortium of uh, customers and business leaders, and everybody gets, gets together. And we talk about the various technological changes. And followed by a very interesting segment, which I will be talking to you about later, which is the quiz. So stay tuned. Just a bit of a community update before we start off. So we have uh, uh, gotten some new Women Who Mule EMEA meetup leaders uh, with myself and Diana. We will also be, uh, we've uh, prom been promoted to the organizers list along with Therese. And uh, so the baton is being passed on. And we still stand strong for our core values, which is diversity, inclusion, equality, and belonging. So this, con uh, this community will continue to encourage contributions from all of you who would want to feature as speakers, uh, future speakers with this meetup and share their success stories, as well as your MuleSoft expertise in your particular area of interest. So I know the trends in technology are changing, but please feel free to use this podium and become a future speaker here. So with that in mind, Let's look at the present changed uh, demographic of the EMEA WWM community. Right, so this is our Women Who Mule EMEA team, followed with uh, the very first person who's, who's also one of the Emily and Alipe, who are uh, the founders of this uh, and sponsors of, of this uh, community when it was started, along with Therese in the UK. And without the support of these three, I think this wouldn't have been a reality. Uh, Therese has been uh, extremely instrumental uh, meetup leader for this group. And is uh, it is sad to say that she's moving to uh, another theater. But uh, she will be supporting uh, us, uh, you know, women whom you'll in some shape or form. So we will be getting updates around that as well in the coming uh, events. So with this uh, shot, community update. Uh, and also, let's just say that uh, me and Diana will be uh, now uh, taking over as the uh, meetup organizers. So feel free to contact us. And uh, so now let us just move on. And uh, without wasting any much of our times, let's move on to the much awaited section, which is of the demos. So I'm really excited uh, to commence uh, this section which would be centered around universal API management. And you all know that it opens up the scope of full lifecycle management capabilities of your APIs. And regardless of where they're built, the architecture in which they're implemented or the environment that they're hosted in. So just to discuss further on that, today we have with us two of our very own resident experts, Therese Gale and Pawan. Firstly, uh, you know, who will be showing us the power of UAPIM in full force and demonstrating just that. First up, we have, I would like to welcome Therese, who will be enabling us on API governance and the magic it holds. So Therese, over to you. Oh, I like that, the magic it holds. Okay, so first of all, in case you're wondering where I'm going, uh, slight spoiler, going to New Zealand, but still working for MuleSoft. So still the same company, around. 
Um, and before going into the actual demo, I'm conscious of the fact some people might be quite new to universal API management, or maybe there's some you know, confusion or things like that. So I just want to take a couple of minutes to really go through uh, what it's all about um, and what I'll be covering in my section. So if you go on to the next slide. So first of all, what is the big vision? What is what, what are we trying to achieve with universal API management? So of course, everyone here, you're very familiar with Mulesoft's offering. Being able to support API from right from inception, design phases, all the way to monitoring operations and so forth. For the whole life cycle, we, we can, our platform can support. So that goodness that we have on the platform, we want to take it elsewhere. We want to take it and be able to apply that capability to other APIs that might have been deployed on Google, or maybe they're sitting on a server on-prem somewhere, and things like that. So that's essentially what the big vision behind universal API management is. So then take our existing API management offering and extend it out. So what we mean by that is now you can start cataloging APIs that are non-mule, maybe living elsewhere, um, so that you have full visibility of your wider state. And just to add a little bit of color, it was a really interesting conversation with a customer we had where they started to look at these APIs that are not managed across the front and they have like a way to scan it. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, we have hundred on AWS that are not protected and we didn't know we had them. So it's really interesting for companies as well. It's a real pain point. So this is something we're trying to address as well. Of course, you know, you might be using all kinds of different languages to build those APIs deploying it in different different cloud environments or on-prem or whatnot and the idea now is also using something like flex gateway you can install this super light uh, and apply those policies so again you're starting to be able to have a bit more control able to um, ensure security and things like that and the thing that i will be talking a little bit more about is what about that governance perspective which traditionally is quite a big pain point so if we go into the next one what i very briefly, just want to touch on. So universal API management is just thrown around. And I've had some customers that ask me, you know, is that a product in itself? And the short answer is a combination of improved, uh, so existing products for new functionality or slightly like, like a new thing, um, features being released and brand new products as well. Uh, but the overall terms, universal API management. So what I mean by that is, Two things that GA is end of April, so a Flex Gateway API governance. So if you're an admin owner of an endpoint platform, um, or you will see that these have come available. So I hope some of you already started playing with them. Um, but then also a couple of other existing products that we have. So like API Design Center to be able to support um, some of the rule sets. Um, things like that have been They've been basically refreshed. Same thing with API Manager to be able to support uh, Flex Gateway. Another thing that we updated is the Anypoint platform CLI. And I'll show a little bit of that today as well, um, just to talk about two stories. And lastly, there is one thing that's still coming, and that's API Experience Hub. So for those who not heard much about it, I don't know what it is. It's essentially we're taking the functionality of API Community Manager or ACM, and we want to put it on our Anypoint platform. So it's really, really exciting. We're essentially doing uh, migrating the features of ACM, um, but it'll be much easier to configure and set up these really interesting um, encapsulating developer portals. Uh, all the term they use is delightful. So that's what it was. That's what they were going for. But that will be released at some point later on. So if we go to the next one, I, I'm sure during your MuleSoft career, at some point, we've seen either one of those figure of eight MuleSoft sites where we show how our platform supports all the different parts of the software development lifecycle. And this one's sort of been a bit of a fresh just to showcase what's new and how that now links to um, you know, different parts of universal API management. So for example, with a API catalog CLI, you can all of a sudden 
maybe you've got a RAML spec or some kind of other spec in a cloud server, et cetera, or a CI CD pipeline, but adding a little bit additional configuration, you can now push that to Exchange and find out about it and add documents as well. Um, any point in API governance, I will be going a bit more detail. Uh, but again, you know, this we've evolved just from our platform. So actually, you can build on other platforms or using other languages, but that doesn't mean you can't benefit from what our plat platform offers. Um, so if you go to the next one, I'll start introducing the demo a little bit. So here, I will show the API catalog CLI just a tiny bit, just to uh, paint a picture a bit more clearer. But what's really powerful is you can leverage this and add it to your CI/CD pipeline. So even things like um, it might be an async API or a, a OAS API that's elsewhere, you can start getting visibility of it. You can start pushing it up to Exchange uh, and doing it in an automated way, which is really, really powerful. And again, just having conversations on customers, they're talking about the fact they know what's on the Mulesoft platform, but they have all these APIs elsewhere, like, but we don't have much visibility. And they're now starting to think, how do we have full visibility of everything and make it easy? So what th this, is, this is what's behind it. If we go to the next one, um, it just adds a little bit more color. Um, so again, if you've seen our roadmap or been paying close attention to what we're releasing, you might have seen a version of this slide. But again, this is just to say, you know, it, first of all, it aligns the kind what's supported. So GraphQL, async, you know, open API, uh, could be a swagger specif specification. Uh, and it's really, really powerful. So all of a sudden you can discover non-mule APIs. So again, just wanted to show like it's really, it's really, really quite exciting functionality. And we're try now trying to get our customers to adopt it. If you go on to the next one, I'll... So the reason why I'm going through these slides is I'm sort of show everything in one because I think it's much easier than I don't have to flip between different screens of presentations. So once I show you a little bit of the CLI um, throughout the demo, but the main piece will be on API governance. So for those of you who not heard of it before, it's essentially uh, something you can use during the design part of your API or microservice. And traditionally, when we look at how, you know, different rules or making sure your API is up to scratch um, in comparison to what your, in, your internal uh, requirements are, it's often a manual e effort. So, and different teams will do it in different ways as well. So maybe one team will say, oh, for us, it's really important you follow this naming convention. You have to secure it by client ID enforcement or something like that. Whereas for other the team, they're like, no, 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 because we're working with lots of different partners or whatnot, we have to have uh, JWT token enforcement or something else. So, and, and those ten, those sort of rules tend to live in documents. So of course, it's not as easy to make sure or it, it takes more manual effort to cross check. So the, the point of API governance is, okay, you have your APIs, you can cut and slice which ones you want a specific rule set to apply to. And that you do that by creating a profile, and I'll show you that. And it just makes it so much easier to see out of all your APIs, be it non-mule or mule APIs, which ones are at risk. You know, how 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 in severe is that risk as well? You know, it might be something minor like naming convention. Okay, that's not critical. But just having that full view of your entire API state and being able to see is, is pretty powerful. So I think that brings us, to, if you go to the next slide, I think that's going to tell me it's demo time. Yes, perfect. So Shressa, if you stop sharing your screen, I'll yeah. start sharing mine. Yeah, I'll just do that. Brilliant. So because I am flipping through a few screens, I have to show my whole screen. Uh, so apologies for the, uh, yeah, you can see, you can see it now, right? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. I was trying to avoid the infinity screen thing, but it's okay. At least now I know. So what I've done here is, oh, I don't want to do that right now. So let's say I'm not very familiar with MuleSoft. I'm actually creating a open API spec. 
and I've created it here. Uh, so you can see, you know, what it looks like. And this one, for the case of a story, it's called Artist API. So you can see uh, what the different um, resources are and the methods underneath and so forth. So, okay, I'm happy. I've created this. Um, I've been told, and again, I'm just using the CLI. Ideally, you would already be plugging this into CICD, so it makes it really easy. But I've been told, okay, we want to like push everything that we're creating to one place, and this is how we do it. So by literally just by once once you've set this up, um, there's a few initial steps like API catalog create scripter to basically say if this API is going to be pushed up, who's the main contact, um, what's the version, things like that. So the, a basic descriptor gets created in a catalog.yaml file, and then you can add further information on it. So and again, just to show you, so something like this gets created, and then you could add other information. So then you can like, oh, actually, for this kind of API, it's going to be experience API. So I'm going to add a tag, and you can also add a different type in terms of categories. So I've got um, type category defined, and I've got, got the value here. So this when you're using the CLI, it gets created, and then you can add things. Another cool thing is you can add an additional document, which adds all of the information you would want um, to append on Exchange. So instead of just having like a blank uh, and then going into the actually looking at the spec itself and mocking service, you can actually push documentation up as well. So it's really quite powerful. Uh, you don't have to do it manually to so just push it all up. But anyway, I created it. I know which command to do. So I already pushed it up to any point exchange. So you can see it was successfully published. Uh, I've got the version, artist API, and great. So I successfully cataloged one API. So what happens next, if I go onto exchange, you can see this is the version. Um, and this is what I'm saying. At the moment, I don't have the documentation here, but you can push that up as well via additional doc file. Um, and the first thing I'm seeing is actually, there's certain rules that I'm not compliant to. So if you wanted to find more information about them, you can click into it uh, and you're like, okay, so what is this authentication security best practices about? What kind of rules are they? So then again, you can go through and understand. Um, so again, it'll, it'll tell easy things. So for example, something like uh, keys and query, you know, everyone can see the URL. So that's of course, uh, deviating from best practices. So here, if you were not familiar with them, you can like go through it, look at this rule set, understand what needs to be done. Um, and also what you'll see is immediately when you push something up and as I was talking about the tags and the categories, you can see that these have come through and essentially I'll go to the API um, governance portal in a second, but I've told through tagging or categories, it's really up to you how you want to do it. Uh, but basically said, I want this a specific API to be validated as some, against something. And what's being it's being validated against is these two rule sets. So just because it can take a little bit of time, I'm going to fix it, let's say on-prem, because I'm working um, with a non-mule API first. So Again, I know what I need to fix. So for me, it's going to be very easy. But one thing you'll see here is I've commented out the security. So I know I need to do that. Another thing that I need to do is you probably, those of you are very eagle-eyed. I've got examples everywhere else, but I don't have an example here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy this. And let's see if I can get it in the right place, I think here. Need to go here and let me just fix this one so it's in. Okay, brilliant. So I updated it here. If I save that, I think that should be okay. Uh, we will see. <laughs> Next thing that's important, I do need to update my. Um, up now. <laughs> and then once I'm happy and ready, I think everything is saved. Just double check. What I can do is publish the asset again. So what you should see happening is that it's basically now, okay, I'm preparing it, I'm sending it to Exchange, so it should be, should be pushed up. 
So while that is going, let's see if I can give it how long it takes. Also, if you have questions or things like that, don't feel, uh, feel free to ping message. Um, I'll look at them near the end. Okay, brilliant. So you can see that has been pushed up successfully. So if I go back to um, here. What I can do first is just refresh to see if it has, it's reflected here. Okay, so what you'll see now at the moment is not validated. So basically it takes a little bit of time for it to go through the, and apply the right rule sets. It doesn't happen instantaneously. So what I'm gonna do now, is just spend a little bit of time explaining the API governance portal. So something like here, you see everything in, in like at a glance. So you can see how many profiles you have. You can see the API conformance states. You can also start seeing, you know, what's high severity, what's low severity. So you can start prioritizing. And as an API owner, uh, you would be notified if you publish an API and it's non-conformant. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. So I've already created this one. So what I'm going to do is just edit it so I can show it to you. So first things first, you can create a name for it. I've just called it security best practices for experience APIs. And then you can select which ones, which of the rule sets you want to be here. And again, in my opinion, it makes sense to break it out. And then you can be really smart how you use tags and um, the categories. So here I've just said, okay, I just want this one to be related to security. And here, this is where I actually define. So this profile that I'm creating, to what kind of APIs do I want it to, uh, you know, apply to? What kind of tags do I want to have? What kind of categories and so forth? Uh, and you can see what the, what the different options are. So that's fine. So what I want to do next, here again, I'm going to just say just the API publisher. Uh, and that's basically the how you go through it. So once I'm happy with everything, I can update profile and really, yeah, you can see up here. So it says validation time, uh, roughly two minutes. So another thing, I'm gonna do the same here just to show you. So I'm actually 1.10 and it's still waiting. Because uh, you, you can see the previous version, it wasn't compliant, um, but it hasn't scanned the new one. But you can see it like breaks it down. So you've got two views. You can have look at the views of um, the profiles. And then within a profile, you can see which APIs are actually compliant or which are not. And what's really handy is you can then, you know, if the owner has been a, a bit of time, they haven't fixed it, you can actually email them and say, you know, this is the kind of template that will be used and they'll receive that. Uh, and then you can send that notification. Uh, just to jog the, just to force it to revalidate, what I'm gonna do is just tweak something here and then it should basically, it will do it in a couple of times, but just to basically ensure. Okay, so here, all of a sudden you can see in terms of security best practices, it has now validated. We see it's the latest version. Uh, and now because I, commented out the security bit, it actually has passed the check. And again, this is just for demo, I'm keeping it quite simple, but I hope you can see um, how powerful that can be. And the other one now is also, because I forced it by saving again to like revalidate basically now. So you can see that now as well as 100% compliant. So this is the story from if you uh, have a non-mule API and you're developing it elsewhere, what this could look like. What I do really want to show you as well, if you're using Design Center and you may be creating this here, um, what's really cool is you can actually pull in these rule sets into Design Center and get validation. So I know I need to look at, so what was it? There was this one and there's also required examples that we had. So let me add those two dependencies. And what you will see, hopefully, is that some errors start popping up. So 
and and this again is helpful so you know here you know i need to action something required examples okay so somewhere i'm missing an example and it tells you where to kind of gives you a hint where to look, look at it as well so the same way when you're designing um your api and there's an error or something missing and tries to do that so again if you wanted to start fixing it i same same issues as before uh, and then it's just adding the example. And once you're happy, then you could pu publish it to Exchange. Um, and basically, it'll scan again what's there and apply the raw sets. So I'll stop there. I'm conscious of time. Uh, but yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Shrestha. I'll stop sharing my screen. So there you go. I think this was amazing, Therese. And uh, I'll just quickly share my screen again. And let me just also so so i really like the profiles and the rule sets that we are trying to you know just enforce through this and the visual through which uh, in the api governance where we can see the apis uh, you know we can apply those uh, rule sets to the apis and uh, then those best practices can be ensured like they're conformant or not so this is basically a very good feature and uh, it will give you more uh, control over the you know api management uh, perspective as a whole and you can s definitely you know go on and secure our apis and ensure that they are also conformant so again this is a very new feature so everyone uh, i i'm sure that you must have you know like seen the amazing demo that Therese has given over cli as well as how it looks in the anypoint platform so you do uh, i do understand there were uh, you know there must be some questions so please feed feel free to drop that in the chat and I'll ask them on your behalf. And again, there is like, it's amazing demo. Thanks for sharing all this information with us. Pleasure. I suspect many people have already tried it, but <laughs> I hope at least something was useful or just a bit of context in terms of what customers are thinking about. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to Flex Way next. Yeah, let's, let's do just that. And, uh, Meanwhile, I'll just uh, check in the chat window as well if there are any questions coming up, which I'm sure there must be. So, right. And now the next demo, let's talk about that. So there is any point flex gateway, sorry. Uh, it's totally unwired to bring to you the cohesiveness as well as the flexibility of this new age ultra fast feature, uh, you know, that has brought in the API world. And this will be delivered by none other than our own Pavan Sangal, who will be presenting on all the architectural as well as the functional features of this ultra fast new gateway from MuleSoft, which is the AnyPoint Flex gateway. He will also be demonstrating on the set uh, setup and the visual of this gateway. So please stay tuned for this and uh, without any delay. So I'll over to you, Pavan. I'll just stop. Right. Thank you, sister. Uh, yeah. Let's... Okay. Do you want me to share this? Yeah, go to the next slide, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so hi, everyone. So, welcome. So, today we'll be uh, doing a brief overview of what a Flex Gateway is, what are its capabilities, and by the end of the time, I, I'll, I'll quickly do a demo for you guys, right? How you can install your Flex Gateway on your Docker and run it and how you can manage your modern new APIs. Okay, on the architectural side, mainly there are three uh, processes, I will say, uh, okay, that are there in a flex gateway, controller processes, Envoy and flow and fit. Okay, so, so controller processes contains your processes, right? Like your object store and Kubernetes controllers, everything that, are flex gateway required right to to uh, for its own functioning okay so object store for example it needs for some of the policies like for your rate limiting policies object store will store the counter of the request that any api is saving right so these these are the kind of things that a controller processes will contain and envoy it, it's an open source uh, i'll say product that is available and it it contains like it is the actual uh, process right, that, that is keep applying or testing your policies against any API, right? So it will keep a copy of every policy and it will validate against all the APIs that, are, that you are trying to manage through your Flex gateway. So, and 
it's and another one is the last one is the fluent bit. So fluent bit is nothing but just a logging process that will just capture the logs from your controller and work processes and can push to the different, uh, let's say, outbound system. So in our case, it will be endpoint monitoring. And another fun fact, it's, it's written in C++, so it is faster compared to, to the other Java written uh, gateways, okay? And that's one of the distinguished factor for our uh, any point flex gateway. Okay. So our next slide, please. Okay, and uh, so, so you can deploy a flex gateway on any platform practically. You can put it on a Linux, you can run it as a Docker service or any EKS. Okay, on any Kubernetes services, be it Google, Amazon, Azure, OpenShift, anything, right? So other other op options you have is Swarm or Mesos, right? Also, and um, and you can run it as an ingress controller for your, all your Kubernetes clusters, also, or you can put it as a, a Linux or a service on a Linux. Okay, and yeah, uh, next slide, sister. Okay, yeah, the few of the key concepts for our uh, gateway is, is a local mode and what is a connected mode. So local mode means you will be managing, the customer will be managing uh, the whatever the APIs they want to manage locally. And they and in the connected mode, difference is the, the installation, management, everything will be done from the control plane on the corner platform. But in local mode, you will be doing through some configuration files that will be hosted on your local machines. Okay, and what's the API instance? So API is a service that is uh, managing the traffic between your gateway and the on the backend services. Okay, and it will be validating the traffic, uh, the request, again some policies and the routes that we have defined. Okay. Okay, so routes are nothing but just how uh, each request will be routed to the backend services, and policies is, is a standard rule of sets and. Uh, that you are going to enforce on your each of the API, okay? So different kind of policy are your security and your compliance policies and etc. Right? Yeah. If you have any question, just just post it, post it on chat, and I will be happy to answer. Okay. Uh, next one, I think, is the demo. Next slide, please. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll just quickly uh, stop sharing my screen, and then you can take okay. over. For the sake of the demo, what I have is I have an API that is defined in the exchange and another uh, web service that is running somewhere. Okay, and what we are going to do today is we are going to install our Flex Gateway. Everyone can see my screen. Yes, we can see. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll log into our console on, on Cloud Hub. We'll go to the Runtime Manager and inside the gateway on the left you see a flex gateway tab okay option you click add gateway and you get the three options right if you want to run it as a service on a linux or on linux machine or you want to run inside a kubernetes cluster or you will run docker okay for today's demo i'll be going inside a docker container okay so i'll be i have a docker demo running on my local machine okay so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll follow the instructions that are there on the platform. Okay, the first one is we are pulling an image like gateway from the registry. Okay, so we'll run this, and it will take few seconds. It's a uh, hundred MB kind of the full download. Okay, ninety five MB file that full download. Docker Hub. Okay, meanwhile it's downloading. We'll we'll copy the next one. So the second, so, so the next command is to register your uh, Flex Gateway to your Anypoint Cloud Hub. Okay. So here the different options that you see here is, is, is the, the, the one of the options, right, that you get, how you can register is, is that there are three options. You can use username, password, or tokens, or the connected apps. For this demo, we'll be using tokens. And when, when you're trying to register through the, the, the tutorial or the steps that are given, here on the Cloud Hub, it, it uses a token, okay? So the different options that we have, so now what we have to give is, we have to give a gate pin name, okay? We'll, we'll copy this command, go to our terminal, we'll give our gate pin name, 
and I'll be using let's so we'll just hit enter. It will uh, register this beta flex gateway name under the flex gateway uh, menu on our cloud hub. And what it will do after that is it will download the three configuration and it will save in your directory that you are running. Okay, so these are the three configuration files that are very important and it will be used for running. Okay. So configuration file will contain the configurations, the URL of our Cloud Hub, keys and everything. Okay, and these are the certificates and access keys that we have. Okay, moving forward, uh, now we are going to start our gateway. Okay, so what we need to do here is, I will just do So for this one, we need some information. Okay. So we need the and the name of the config files. There is we'll give the so this is the UUID for that particular installation. So we'll we'll copy this. And this will be unique for all the installations that are customers will be doing. Okay. Here we have to give the absolute path to that directory. So here I can pick file is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the thing looks good, and the port by default is 8081. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just hit enter. And it will start running your flex gateway. Okay. So another thing that we'll be doing is for the so so right now it's just running one replica, and what we also recommend is to have another replica running, just in case if there are any issues. Okay. The same thing we are going to do here. Okay. I should have copied this. Similarly, we'll copy the name of the config file and we have to give absolute path also. And we will be giving the replica name. So let's put the replica. And port also. For a replica, so I will be using the 8082 port.
be now. This was nothing. So now our both uh, two replicas are running. So what is I will go back to our, our Cloud Hub platform. And in here, we see this gateway, which is register, and it has two replicas that are running. OK. Any questions still here? Any doubts? Yeah, guys, please feel free to put it in the chat section. OK, so I see one. For which use cases would you suggest using Flex Gateway over Mule Gateways? Willie is asking. So so Flex Gateway will what uh, we want the customers to do is to manage the non mule soft APIs. OK, so by what earlier customer used to do is, let's say, if you want to manage some non mule soft API, you have to use uh, uh, you have to create some kind of proxy, right, to, to manage the API. But with our Flex Gateway, so you can manage uh, uh, any non mule soft API without having to create any proxy. Okay. Yeah, so this is the most, uh, I would say, the, uh, you know, the popular feature and the star feature of this that, you know, even the non mule APIs can be managed and governed through this Flex Gateway. And any other questions? how different. Uh, it is to install in local mode. Like, what is the difference? Zenu is asking. So, I don't think there are much differences. The only thing that will be different is you won't have to register it. Okay. And what are the rest of the configuration you have to manage through your configuration files? Okay. Okay. So, so everything is well documented. Just go through documentations and you will be able to do it. So not much of a major difference, but yeah, a little bit of it, as Pavan yes. mentioned. Guys, any other questions? Please feel free to put it in the chat section. And thanks, Pavan, for this amazing demo. This was really uh, very helpful. Yeah, for all so of us. Now, yes, so in the next section, what we'll be doing is we'll be just registering an API, OK, an API manager, OK, and targeting on the Flex gateway. Right? OK. OK. Yeah, so, so now go to your API manager, click add new API, and you have the options to now to select. So where do you want to, how do you want, want to manage the API? Is it through Flex Gateway or Mule Gateway or Service Mesh? So we'll be selecting Flex Gateway. And I have registered too many Flex Gateway, so I'll, I'll select what is that I created now. So that is Meta Flex Gateway. And click Next, right? So. For the sake of demo, I'm, I'm using this demo API, which is already published. Okay, it's, it's written in Dremel OS. I think it is in OS. So to select your API, click Next. Okay, and give the URL of the API. So this is my API. It has just one URL, which is the ping, and it gives me this hard coded response. So I'll just copy this. Okay. And I'll give the implementation URL specified for instance. I'll put this I'm using the dev. Okay. And yeah, I'll be using 8081 for that is HTTP one. Okay. Now click next, weld it all the details, and click save and deploy. It'll take a few seconds to deploy. And okay, once it is running, or what you can do is go and see it now on our flex yet also you can monitor the logs everything here okay i think it's deployed now what we will do is so as my docker is running locally so what i can do is i can do it here it did one port. Okay, I think it's still loading. So what we can do is from there now you have your you can add as many policies as you want and you can manage your non use of it here. So we we'll go here and be adding client ID enforcement policy. Okay. 
multiply. No, done. So simple as that. So you just don't need to. Let's say if you have some Java application that is running, so you would have to write a large, huge chunk of code to just simply add some security. So using a flex gateway, you can manage all those APIs and add as many security policies and different other operations that you want to do. Okay. And you can use a, uh, any point monitoring dashboard to monitor all the different matrices uh, for those APIs. Any questions, any yeah. doubts? I think I see in the chat section, uh, Jan has a question for you, Pavan, saying that yeah. how can I route two applications over one flex gateway by distinguishing the target by the app name, generic in the best case? Uh, so the important would be to not send the application name part of the URL to this application. So assume application name is a test API uh, SAPI. The call URL would be HTTPS flex gate host test API SAPI API test. So but the app itself should get the URL as this one. So do you want to know, Jan, that how can we probably, you know, mask this application URL? Is that your question? You just need more clarification. Yeah, because it's a really detailed one, I would say. Routing of multiple apps. Okay. So that's what he's trying to ask. Multiple apps, as in, so from one API, so it will be, uh, so it will be one implementation URL, right? And you can add as many as routes or as the pass you want. Is, is that the question? So do you want to check, Jan? Can we route multiple applications through the Flex Gateway? Is that your question? All apps. So, okay, let's say, yeah. okay. so it, it's, but yeah, in the gateway, right, when you're de defining your API, you can just put like, uh, just your host name, right, and slash star. So whatever in implementation is there in your app, it will route it to that. It will just match that. Let's say if you are doing uh, host name, port name, slash something, hello. Right, so it will just you just define implementation URL till the host port name and slash hello will be your, during your request. I think that's the, that's the question, right? Yeah, and he's also putting in that, but all the apps would expect this uh, slash API slash this would lead to an error. It still depends on how you define that. So if your implementation URL requires those, you can define those. If not, then you don't specify slash apps in the correct. This in, is in your implementation URL. Yeah. This is just naming convention, I would say, like the path that you're defining. Right. I'm not an expert, but just coming back to the some of the key concepts. So I know there's services and routes, and I think that's where basically you define like what, so each route is associated with a service, for example, and you have a service that may have multiple routes associated. So there's like a little bit more complexity. It's not just as a straightforward, like there's ways you can configure that. But Van, you probably can explain it better than I can, because <laughs> it's my, not my area of specialty. Yes. I think it will need a different space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has to be real, right? Right, yeah. Right, sure. <laughs> okay. Right. So thank you, Pawan, for this amazing demo. And uh, it was a lot uh, insightful for us. And thank you for ena enabling us on this how to's for the Flex Gateway. This is really a new feature and very interesting. And uh, I'm sure, you know, the audience will find it really interesting. Yeah, meanwhile, please uh, plug in your questions, guys, if you have any, and I'll just move on to the next segment. Right. 
And now it's time to reflect on this major MuleSoft event of this year, which was MuleSoft Connect, which happened on June uh, the last month, that is June 29th and 30th. I'm sure you all have must heard of this and seen posts around this event. So here I would really request you to also, you know, share in the chat window what was the most interesting thing that you found in this year's Connect and how was your experience, uh, you know, for you to attend it virtually or even in person. So please feel free to leave your comments on the chat window. So with that in mind, let's look at the major highlights of this event. The Connect uh, 22 took place in London, Sydney, and New York uh, on June 29th and June 30th. So the major focus of this year's uh, event were automation and sustainability as a core value. So MuleSoft has enabled and helped customers globally to drive both these initiatives through uh, you know, means of connecting applications, integrating data, and now also unleashing this innovation through automation in action with MuleSoft RPA. So a very heartwarming initiative as well as a core value emerged as the center of discussion in this year's Connect, and this was sustainability. So how can we as technologists be taking you know, this era of digital transformation, which is totally changing every day? So we as technologists, what is our responsibility that you, you must, we must embrace this core value of sustainability and try and inculcate uh, you know, these best practices in our daily developmental activities as technologists that we perform you know, within our organizations? So this is to bring the change that we wish to see in this world. So global warming, it is a reality, and we must look at innovative ways to reduce our carbon footprint to bring about this change. So we will be talking about this very shortly in the next segment, which is quite interesting. These are some of the amazing notable uh, London Connect special moments. So these are the amazing highlights. So this year's Connect was really special uh, as uh, two of our uh, WWM EMEA leaders, as well as founders were speakers for this prestigious event. Emily Patra, who is the head of the CSSA EMEA team, uh, presented the MuleSoft vision at the keynote in London. And Terry Scale, who's here with us, is a sustainability champion and has presented over best practices in the same in the very same event as you see on your screen. Also, she has been instrumental in driving this amazing initiative within MuleSoft as well as within uh, you know our customers presented on uh, these best practices and how should companies actually move towards a much more cleaner, greener future and make conscious choices, keeping the climate change in mind. So there were a lot of firsts for this event, I would say, you know, in London this year. So we were the only OU globally to host an equality breakfast, also to host a women in tech panel, uh, you know, equality breakfast. And then we have uh, Therese and Fiona who took over the sustainability session on the main stage where they, they had uh, the awesome opportunity to you know speak with customers who have taken the uh, you know uh, the initiative of buying on the salesforce net zero cloud and reducing their carbon footprint through that also we were globally we were the first uh, you know we were the only ou i would say to have a visionary session and demo of mulesoft rpa in action which was given by alia hassan uh, so that was also one one major key takeaway from there so with all these interesting updates, so let's move on to the next segment for today. So this time, let us hear from uh, each one of our panelists present today. So how was the whole experience witnessing this global event in person as well as virtually? So I, for one, surely enjoyed watching it stream live. So let's begin the Q&A. And uh, with that, I'll just stop sharing my screen and ask my questions. Right. So the first question is definitely for Therese. So we are ex first of all, we're extremely proud to have you with us today, Therese. And I just wanted to ask, how was the whole experience, firstly, to speak at such an event? And secondly, how involved and inclined did you find all the customers towards adopting sustainability in in their technological practices? So 
first thing, I will come to your questions, <laughs> but I'm just curious if people tuned in virtually um, because this was a hybrid event. There were physical events happening in London, Paris, Sydney, and New York. So, and I, I am conscious of the fact that the virtual experience is different from the in-person experience. So again, if you saw any of it, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, but I will say it was awesome to see people face to face. Um, again, speaking to customers and sharing ideas. And just from a sustainability perspective, this was, I do really want to stress, we were the only theatre, like the only region in London to speak about sustainability. Um, so that was really huge, huge milestone. And it was interesting to see some customers starting to think, oh, maybe there's something here for us and we haven't really thought about it, but we see the pressure coming. Um, so it was really quite good to bounce ideas and now we've got a few following on, on conversations. So there's definitely interest. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop there before <laughs> derailing <laughs> to a different topic. Yeah, totally. I, I do understand because, uh, you know, the consciousness uh, in, in the tech, in technological companies has increased in terms of, you know, speaking about sustainability and uh, that building interest and, you know, just cultivating on that and probably checking on such conversations, taking on all these conversations is really important. So for, I mean, kudos if you're taking that initiative and uh, I'm really, you know, happy that at least, you know, we'll be doing it, we're doing our bit towards that and would love to really hear more on this space. And I think things are going to come up in the future. I, I do suppose they are on the line. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's just a start. Don't worry. I'll be hammering about this topic for forevermore. So <laughs> you'll definitely I'm hear sure, more. I'm sure, I'm sure then. you would, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And yeah, and so first of all, now let's talk to the newest, you know, member of our group of the Women Who Mule community, Diana. Diana Radeva. She has recently oh, joined. Hi, Diana. So just Hello, to give everyone. you. Right. OK, so just to give you a bit of an introduction. So she has recently joined MuleSoft as a customer success architect, and she hails from Spain. So Diana, it's, it's really nice to have you with us. So if I ask you, what is your major Key takeaway from this year's connect that you found the most interesting and you could also resonate with what what would that be thank you thank you Astresa and Therese as well well it's an enormous pleasure for me to be part also of a woman who mule team well as a background no, I joined MuleSoft as you said only a couple of months ago but it was really a long trail of amazing experiences, starting from my onboarding journey, fully personalized to my role and complete plan waiting for me one week before my first day or just becoming a um, Salesforce workshop ses session to immerse new hires in Nohana culture and values. So, so many things ha has happened, no? but probably the most special one was this year's Connect event. Mm, obviously, well, for me, it was very special because it's the first time that I had the opportunity to watch it um, as an employee of MuleSoft. And I realized that the feeling now is completely different from when I was uh, just a viewer of as a MuleSoft uh, customer. No? I have been following MuleSoft Connect events since around 2019, more or less. And in this year's event, I could see really a clearly a clear evolution of the company from different perspectives no in first place i would highlight that i saw mules of more integrated into salesforce as a whole from one side uh, the content and uh, the content uh, if you saw some of the videos um it was closer to salesforce style so i'm really happy to see at the end that uh, max mule uh, was uh, well accompanied by many uh, salesforce characters like Cloudy the goat, uh, Cloudy the bear, and my favorite one, astronomical. So I really like them. But on the other side, I perceived unity, you know? unity in the global message. So MuleSoft, with the best in class platform for integration in API management, is working together with um, the best in class CRM system. And both are part of an amazing you know, por a product portfolio at higher level. So it, it's like, it's no more um, only MuleSoft or Salesforce, but it's working together 
um, for the customer success and it was really inspiring message for me. Um, and the second uh, takeaway that I would uh, highlight is that, um, well, we were able to see the next generation of Microsoft indeed, because I saw, um, as I said, I was following in the, in the last years, no, the Microsoft Connect uh, event. And in 2019, more or less, it was like all about connecting system, no, just when most of the organization were starting their digital transformation journey, moving to cloud, and they was, yeah. Um, uh, they were getting um, concise, no, um, conscious about uh, how many challenges they will face. Um, Mulesoft was offering uh, easy solution to their pains um, even before they experimented them. So it was really a big um, news for, for many organizations. No, one year later, during the pandemic, when the digitalization journey um, of the organization had to be accelerated. Mulesso presented Composer, which empowered business users to connect uh, and integrate without uh, IT or with uh, less dependency uh, on IT. And um, well, in 2021 20, uh, arrived Universal API Management and it changed. And also it was um, one of the core um, um, concept presented in this uh, Connect event. Um, the concept of uh, API management became universal and we were able to see it today you know, in the demo with uh, Bawan and Teres. So um, now, uh, Mulesoft uh, is uh, able to solve um, problems of broader list of customers independently of where they have their APIs or code and on Cloud Hub, uh, Kubernetes or whatever. No, it's like an easy and fast way to manage one central platform and all the assets and also to create to evolve it to an API ecosystem. And this year, this year is like well, Mulesoft announced next level. Uh, so let's uh, automate everything and to empower everyone. You know? It introduces the joint plan uh, between uh, Composer and RPA to unleash yeah. the in innovation. Yeah, we're yeah. not talking about to create the innovation, but to in unleash it uh, with right. Mulesoft to achieve operational efficiency, high productivity. We also have seen it you know, with uh, the demo. So you can easily check you know, uh, the things if they are compliant according to your best practice and to reject yeah. them, to fix them. That, it always no so in summary during the last uh, last year what i can say is that uh, yeah Mulesoft, i saw it like very highly adaptable um always responding to the customers needs because yeah we are listening our customers we are evolving our product and always to be you know um on the edge of the wave and to drive the customer success is a top priority you know and we know the internal uh, employees, we know that the customer success is something very, very, very important for us, very appreciated and how we celebrate it. No? So, uh, every customer success doesn't matter the size, it's uh, celebrated as an own success for everyone. So yeah, that is a really amazing experience for me. Um, and uh, I'm curious to know <laughs> the next yes, year more what we are going to do. Maybe, you know, that'll take over, I would say. Yeah. And, and, and that integration yeah. perspective gets evolved more and more once we, you know, we're already merging with the uh, Salesforce, uh, you know, landscape. And it's, it's amazing to see uh, how new features like API governance, universal API management, and, you know, any point flex gateway, managing all those uh, non mute applications as well, and getting everything on the central platform, yeah. which is, you know, the AnyPoint platform is, is amazing, amazing platform. to you know, see. That's what. Yeah. So exactly. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, you know, there's lots in store which will get developed and you know it's in the process and of course it's, it's going to be exactly. getting more interesting and you know exciting and i am getting some comments you know regarding so Murli saying that it seems like implementing uh, you know digital transformation itself is you know become you know like sustainable itself is a sustainability practice probably you know just amalgamating all all the digital transformation with sustainability so this is also a very sort of a good idea i would say <laughs> And a good, uh, you know, thought to take forward. Completely aligned with <laughs> what the yeah, organizations definitely. need um, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Right. So yeah, thank you. This conversation was really, uh, you know, very. I know it. There's there's a lot of topics, you know, on your head, and probably we want to discuss more on them. But again, due to the, you know, 
less time that we've got but uh, i'm really happy that you guys provided your perspectives and uh, as today is you know attending it in person and you know being one of the speakers which is totally amazing and talking about sustainability and how passionate topic this is and you know diana speaking about it as uh, the experience she had seeing it virtually and also her experience with uh, the evolution of news of since you know the last year and she just mentioned all the developments so thank you uh, both of you for presenting all that and uh, with that i i will take it to the next segment and let me just quickly share my screen Yeah, and I was just going to say, I can't agree more with the pace of innovation. Sometimes for me, I'm like, oh, this is new. I need to. <laughs> and we had a couple of comments in the chat as well. They're like, wow, Mulesoft's yeah. offering seems to be evolving. And it's, exactly. it's good that people can see that. Yeah, and, and it is changing, you know, it's, it's changing in every two, three months, I, I would say, like, you know, it's, it's great. So I'm sure, you know, yeah, because everything is moving too fast and everything is changing uh, around us. And finally, you know, our focus is um, to cover these changes and to make the life. Yeah, easy. be with it. So, be with the time, I would say. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. Right. Okay. To both of you you know patiently answering my questions and having this you know great conversation so this is indeed fun to you know interact on such a platform it's always good to you know we have a good audience and probably everybody is you know listening in on all these topics also it, it drives that kind of uh, technological you know perspective and change and you know we can talk about the values and the impact that we are bringing as technologists in the world of uh, you know integration technology so this was great so what's next so if you enjoyed watching this event, please uh, feel free to post about this on LinkedIn with all these hashtags which are on your screen and support our community because we do need, you know, pe uh, you people to support and attend these meetups because all we do is we do it for you and all the topics, all the interesting topics, we're going to be taking many future topics later on, but this can only be happening without, you know, not, uh, you know, uh, without your help, we need your help and all that. So if you would like to, you know, become a future speaker and you have ideas for topics that you can share, which are technical and related to your customer success stories, your experiences, please get in touch with us. And I will be telling you about these steps in the next slide and invite people from your network to join in, you know, this meetup group. And it would be great to have you, you know, on board. So if you have uh, certain ideas or any interesting topic, just feel free to go to this page, navigate to the meetup page, and then you have this contact the organizer button at the very end. And if you click on it, probably you'll get a form where you can summarize your idea and then you can probably, you know, press send and then we will get in touch with you. So it's this simple. So please come forward and contribute your success stories and your technical expertise as well. So, and that goes without saying that we are looking forward to hosting many more of you in, in this year. So with that, now is the time for the closing and the most exciting event, which will be taken over by Diana. And so we have something very exciting for you. So please stay tuned. And uh, yeah, Diana, over to you. Okay, thank you, Andresta. Uh, can you stop sharing in order to be yeah. able to yeah, stop I'll sharing? Yeah, I'll just stop sharing. Yeah, okay. let me just stop sharing. Yeah, we are good now. Okay, let me try to do it. Okay. Please confirm me that uh, you can see my screen. Sure. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. I see it now. Perfect. Okay, so thank you everyone that uh, still um, is connected and uh, stay with us. Finally, we arrived at the funny part. Um, quick introduction to the next steps. Um, please go to the link. You can see in the, uh, you can uh, see on the screen that is www.menti.com. You will be asked to enter the code that you can see. Okay, I can see all, already there are some of the players that are entering. You have to introduce the code 40, 68, 41, 43. After that, you should introduce the name. Please, it's very important. Introduce your name because it's the way that we have to identify you and to, to also to, to know which, are, which is your result. Okay. We can see some guys. Please join in. Please, please join in the quiz. 
it's going to be really interesting really interesting and also the price is great <laughs> yeah that is that is the end of it i think <laughs> <laughs> and also the fun so um meanwhile we are waiting for more joiners um remind what you have seen in the demos because probably we are going to ask you something <laughs> and remember um this is scored highest so you should be fast responding but please read the question <laughs> so we are going to have four questions after each question, we are going to see um, the, um, the result, who has responded uh, for each of the question um, fastest, and also the accumulative score for each of the person. Okay. At the end of the fourth question, we will be able to see who is the winner. Okay. Okay, we have 10, 10 players. Trista, do you yeah, I think we should consider go. that we can start? It's okay, I think we can start. I think a lot of people have joined, I think. So, so are you prepared? I guess yes. Yes. So we can start. <laughs> Good luck. API governance lies at which phase of software lifecycle? Please answer. So who's one of the questions? Of the answer, sorry. Okay, so we were able to see there were two answers correct, two players has answered and correctly. Okay, so let's see who who was the fastest. Okay, Maxim. Great, well done. Okay, so Let's see the next question. Be ready. Question two. Want you guys please try one? Any point? Answer fast. Any point flex gateway can be used for managing and governing new applications only. Answer fast. Click true on false. Well, well done. Okay, it's 50-50. Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. Well, indeed. Um, well, Flex Gateway is it's part of the universal API management um, evolution of our product. It's about managing everything everywhere. Okay, so it's not only new application, but non new as well. Okay, so well done. Let's see who is, who were, who was the, the fastest that time? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Maxi. Maxim is still on the top. Okay, next one. Third question. Be ready. Which of the following is not supported by API auto cataloging under API governance? This is the tricky one. SOAP, RAML, OAS, ASIN, which is not supported. Pay attention. Let's see. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so more or less 50-50, um, but yeah, the right answer is so. Yeah, finally, we are talking about APIs, RESTful, flexibility. So, so up is like part of the past. <laughs> okay, let's see which is which are the scores. Who is the leader? Let's see, let's see. Still in this round, Maxim is the was the fastest and still is on the top okay last question everything could change be ready
which are the two mode, modes of any point flex gateway local connected connected and private if you would have listened in i think you'll be able to answer this question i will have also enough time perfect so the, the vast majority of respondents correctly so great great done so let's see now we are going to be able to see who is the winner okay in this round i think that we have the winner maxim dilovsky Congratulations. <laughs> you were the fastest at um, for the four well, the last uh, question. There were some changes, but overall you have um, gained the highest score. So congratulations. Um, we will need your email and the complete name in order to provide you the instructions how to get your voucher only to keep um, attention that the voucher uh, could um, um, delay around a maximum two weeks, but don't worry, you, you will get your voucher, okay? So congratulations, congratulations to Maxim. Maxim. Really well done. Um, and also, because it's free vouchers, we yeah. can give it to nuts. Well, I don't know who yeah. nuts is, you might have to. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good, good name to have, I think. Who is nuts? <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped sharing. Maxim, we have here your name. Uh, please share in the chat box uh, your email as well. And uh, thank you to everyone who participated, who stayed with us until the end. And it was really a great experience. I hope for you as well. Yeah, and I think Maxim has already provided the Gmail ID and uh, nuts, please go ahead and provide yours as well. And uh, I think Murli came third, I guess. So well done, Murli. And uh, he's also men mentioned in the comments that there were delightful discussions, nice takeaways, and he's really enjoyed it. So thank you, thank you, Murli, for this great comment. This was so much fun. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks, Diana. So you got all information. Yeah, you got us all jarred up, you know, with the quiz and all, all, all became competitive, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So yeah, this I'll this stop the recording now, just, and then we can carry on chatting.